Our next presenter will be Lisa Hurt, and she will be presenting quantifying circuit activation in deep brain stimulation surgery for a central tremor. Hi, thank you. Again, my name is Lisa, and if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to my email here. I'd like to thank Dr. John Thompson and everyone else that has made this project possible and the Modern Human Anatomy program and faculty. Essential tremor is the world's most common movement disorder and is more common than epilepsy and Parkinson's disease. It is characterized by an action and intention tremor, which means that when the person is trying to move, that's when you see the tremor and not when the person is holding still. ET or essential tremor is commonly misdiagnosed and a reason for this could be because there's no consistent diagnosing criteria or treatment. And right now, the common treatment is medications, but medications only reduce tremors about 30%. And we also don't know what causes essential tremor, but there is research suggesting a genetic predisposition. But a very effective therapy that has been discovered is deep brain stimulation therapy, or excuse me, deep brain stimulation surgery that has been able to show reduction in tremors by 90%. When DBS or deep brain stimulation surgery occurs for essential tremor, the electrode is implanted into the ventral intermediate nucleus of the thalamus or VIM for short. And when the electrode is implanted here, electricity goes through the electrode and creates a volume of tissue activation or VTA. This VTA is thought to stimulate the VIM thalamus and other cortical areas by activating or modulating white matter tracts near the thalamus. Therefore, the objective of this study is to examine how does this VTA and white matter tract activation lead to tremor and symptom relief. To do this, we use the Medtronic electrode seen here. The black segments mean contact points, and if we take a cross section of the contact points, you can see that the activation occurs in 360 degrees around the probe. And depending on if one or two contact points are activated, depends on if it's monopolar or bipolar type of stimulation, as seen here. Monopolar means that there's one contact point and looks like a sphere. Bipolar means that there's two contact points activated and it looks more like a dumbbell. We also wanted to examine how white matter tracking is affected by DBS surgery, so we use DTI data or diffusion tensor imaging data to understand the structural and um, functional activity of the white matter tracks. And here is an example of a DTI whole brain data that we made in the lab. So this study has three hypotheses. Our first one is that bipolar activation will stimulate less of the VIM thalamus than monopolar, that an increase of monopolar activation and voltage will lead to a change in DTI and therefore a change in white matter tracks. And also we want to examine the cerebellothalamocortical pathway because there is a thought that this pathway is abnormal in every type of tremor and that um, DBS surgery is actually really stimulating this pathway and not so much the thalamus itself. So we want to explore this theory further. To do this, we had pre-op MRIs and post-op CTs that we co-registered and normalized together in a MATLAB exception called lead DBS. Then we use the most recent patient data to, to stimulate the volume of tissue activation or VTA seen here in red. Using a MATLAB script, we pulled out all of that data and was able to analyze the voxel overlay of the VTA seen here in green and the VIM thalamus here in red. And the overlay is the blue. So how much stimulation is the VIM thalamus really getting from this VTA? Finally, we wanted to understand the start and end points of eat white matter tract that we were examining. So we used free surfer to generate a cortical map of each patient's brain. And here, each color represents a different function of the brain. Also, we wanted to understand how are white matter tracts associated with each of the segments along the cerebellothalamocortical pathway. So we segmented the volume of tissue activation, the primary motor cortex, and the cerebellum. Seen here, you can see that this is the segmentation of the VTA, and here on the y-axis, you can see that this is the white matter tracts associated with the VTA. We did the same thing for the primary motor cortex and the cerebellum. Using all of this data, we started to analyze our hypotheses. Our first hypothesis, examining the difference of VIM activation between monopolar and bipolar activation, was not significant 
Well, but we believe that this is a significant trend. And if we had a bigger population or sample size, that we would see a significant difference between monopolar and bipolar. Because there is actually more patients receiving symptomatic relief from a monopolar activation versus a bipolar activation. Next, we wanted to understand if, the, if we increase the voltage, would this also correlate with an increase in VIM thalamus activation? And we did not find a significant correlation with, with VIM thalamus activation with an increase in voltage. But what we did find is that when there was an increase in voltage, there was an increase in overall thalamus activation, which means that this increase in voltage or stimulation could be going to other thalamic nuclei and still receiving symptom relief. Also, we examined the correlation between DTI and volume of tissue, and we did not see that there was a distinct white matter difference between how large the VTA was and white matter tracking. Finally, we wanted to still examine the cerebellothalamocortical pathway and how much the VTA was overlapping with this. And we did not find that there was a significant difference in the amount of white matter tracts associated with the cerebellum or the motor cortex, or that there was that many unique fiber differences, white matter fiber differences activated with this volume of tissue activation, which makes us believe that there could be an optimal stimulation across all patients. And once there is the stimulation, that that is when we're truly seeing the symptom relief through the cerebellothalamocortical pathway. So overall, we did not have a lot of significance, but we don't really think that's much of a problem because we do have excellent, excellent clinicians that are able to implant the electrode in the optimal location and also use the lowest amount of voltage needed to achieve symptom relief. In the future, we would like to analyze the difference between different electrodes used in DBS surgery and also examine the habituation of stimulation over time. Are there any questions? Great job, Lisa, super cool. Um, while we wait for questions to come in, what kind of changes would you expect for, um, white matter changes do you expect to occur? Like, what are we looking for the DTI changes? So there is research saying that when DTI happens that the white matter tracks actually become more dense than beforehand. And this actually creates more um, cortical volume increase too after DBS surgery. Great. Okay, unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to keep moving on, but good job. <laughs>